What's up, plebs? It's Corey, and I am doing a in Uno individual one-on-one uh, with you. Um, uh, but this one, I'm going to talk about Bitcoin mining. Um, and I've just kind of been toying around with the idea um, of getting all into it. And uh, so I wanted to kind of walk you guys through the process of what I'm thinking. Um, and this is not financial advice, and this is not me recommending anyone do what I am doing, but just found it that, uh, you know, I was looking around for places to get information on Bitcoin mining, and I, I couldn't really find much, you know, like you can find very basics, but as far as like the profitability of it, everything, um, the, the details are a little fuzzy. So anyways, um, but uh, this is brought to you by the Bitbox O2 hardware wallet, and also Movies Plus. If you don't know what they are, then I suggest you go Google them um, because uh, I'm not going to talk about them anymore right now. So anyways, um, to walk you guys through my thought process, um, sitting here looking at the idea of buying miners, you know, so I was at, um, uh, at, at the conference really checking out the, a lot of the different booths um, and not to just show one in in particular, but uh, upstream data um, and, and Adam O, who, you know, is a friend of the show and I've had him on here before, um, works with them. And, uh, and Adam was showing me the black box uh, that they had running there. And it's really impressive. It's like, wow, you know, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, you know, it, it is kicking off, uh, you know, basically no noise um, and, uh, and really kills the sound, has the airflow down tight. So, so it's pretty cool. Um, and whenever I was thinking about it, I'd been thinking about it for a while at this point. Um, I, I looked at it from a, a different perspective and a different lens. So if you guys could maybe take this meant this, this mathematical mental walk with me. Um, so, you know, we're looking at like, just personally, like budget wise, like, okay, what, you know, I'd like to, re- who wouldn't like to reduce their monthly overhead, you know? Um, so, you know, to give you an idea, I was like, oh, like we could pay off the one car and boom, you know, that's like $550 of, you know, monthly overhead that or the, that's 550 bucks that our monthly overhead is reduced. I'm like, so that's pretty awesome. Um, you know, and I think a lot of people, when you go through budgeting, you kind of go through this in your mind where you're like, hey, you know, you have a chunk of cash, pay that off, then you're good to go. Um So then, so then I was thinking about what if I do something else with it and to like kind of back it up a little bit, you know, like my mindset the whole time with Bitcoin has been, no, just buy Bitcoin and hold it. And it's, you know, obviously we all know where the price is. If you're, you know, a true pleb and you understand it and you get it, um, you're like, we know where the price is going to go. And and so why would I ever, you know, invest in anything other than Bitcoin? So that's kind of why I never really got into the mining. I was like, why would I, why would I invest in something else? Like that doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't compute. I'm just going to hold this and the price is going to go up forever. So anyway, it's looking at the monthly budget, you know, like my personal budget and I'm thinking, well, if I could bring my monthly overhead down um, and, you know, save money, then why not do it on a month to month basis? And then I was looking at the amount of money it would cost to pay up, to pay off the car. And I'm thinking, Hmm, I could get two ASIC miners for that. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, let me look up. So I went on like to, to crypto compare, I think is what the website that you can plug in, you know, if you have a miner with this Terra hash and at this, um, you know, electric electricity rate, you know, what are you, what's your profits going to be? So, um, you know, like my electricity is like 11 cents, uh, per kilowatt hour, which, uh, you know, if you're, if you were mining somewhere where you were like hosting it, um, you know, you could get down to like six cents, um, would be pretty good. Uh, some places are like eight cents. Uh, so your profitability is more there, but I, like, I just want to do it at home. I don't want to do it. I don't want my machine somewhere else. I, you know, that's like kind of the purpose of Bitcoin is like the sovereignty and being able to take care of everything on your own instead of having to depend on other people. Um, so I really wanted those on site. Uh, so going into it with that mindset, I'm like, okay, I'll pay the 11 cents kilowatt hour and, and see 
how much would one of these, you know, ASICs, if I could buy two of them instead of paying off my car, how much would one ASIC kick off, you know, in revenue a month? And uh, in the profits, like after the expenses and everything, it'd be about like a $250 electrical bill um, somewhere around there. So it's funny to how anyone that's in the mining must know these numbers inside and out because um, I think it's like $257 would be the electrical cost to mine per month. And when I'm talking to Adam O about this, he like almost nailed it to the penny. He was like, oh, you're looking at the cost of like, you know, because I told my electrical cost. He's like, like 250, 260, somewhere around there. Um, so, you know, in theory, I could have a lower electrical cost, but let's just hold that on, hold off on that for the time being. So the the profit per month, um, and when the price of Bitcoin was at like 44K, it was like, 420 some dollars a month or something like that um i'm I'll, I'll, i'm gonna do more of this as we go on by the way this is like the first in many i'm going to do a bitcoin mining series and just kind of like walk you through what i'm going through and how i'm getting my setup started and all the you know the ins and outs and the ups and downs that you experience along the way so anyways um so i'm like what you know it would be like the price of Bitcoin was like 44000 It would have been like $425 a month profit. Right now, the price of Bitcoin is down to like $40,500. Um, so like the profitability would go down to like $350 or something. So I like to plan for worst case scenario. So I'm like, okay, let's just say on average, you're going to have $350 a month in profit. You know, and people look at a Bitcoin miner and they go, okay, it is, you know, $8,000 or whatever for a miner. So at $350 it a month, it's going to take, you know, two years to get an ROI on my investment, which is true. But if you look at it from the perspective of instead of paying off a loan and lowering your monthly overhead, I looked at it like, Hey, if I bought two miners, so for the price of two miners, I could pay off my car loan and be and lower my monthly overhead to by five hundred and fifty dollars a month. But if I buy two miners and uh, in I'm making seven hundred dollars a month, then it's taking care of that five hundred dollar five hundred and fifty dollar payment. Plus, in a couple of years, when the car payment is paid off, when the car is paid off it'll keep making that money. You know, I know that miners break and everything like that. Um, so, you know, I was just kind of walking myself through that mindset of like, okay, so we get, you know, like within two years or whatever, like then all of a sudden that monthly payment goes away and I, in the $700 a month continues to roll in like, well, all right, that's a pretty good idea. And, um, and then I started, thinking about it from like a business perspective um to be like a um an event investor um you know an investor of sorts uh but uh so i'll i'll get into that in a second the the idea of like how i looked at it from the perspective of what it's like to look you know um investing in something as a business and and how that could change so from a car payment perspective, it makes sense to buy two miners instead of, you know, paying off the car and lowering my overhead. So that was uh, like the first kind of aha moment. Yeah, I know if I just, you know, sat there and sat on the, you know, 16 grand or whatever it is in Bitcoin, the price is going to go through the moon eventually. I get that. Um, but I'm looking at like, okay, what's ways to make my day-to-day -day life a little bit more free a little more like a little less stressful if you will um so anyway so the business perspective let me get to that in a second but thank the sponsor bitbox uh the bitbox o2 hardware wallet from shift crypto you have to check it out i am you know been screaming from the mountaintops to get your bitcoin off of exchanges um and this hardware wallet is sleek it's really good looking i know i'm going to say that too because I'm, I'm, that's kind of a joke. Uh, that's for Luke. 
uh, because uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, but I, I was and I saw I don't know if you saw on Twitter, I was busting Luke's balls about um about how he was describing the Bitbox wallet because he keeps describing it as sexy, um, you know, because Bitbox gave us the freedom to like riff on these ad reads. They didn't want a script. They just wanted us to, you know, talk about it and talk about our experience with it. Um, and uh, and and so Luke keeps going back to sexy and he's like, I didn't have that pre-planned. It's just that's what I thought of when I looked at it. So apparently Luke is sexually attracted to the Bitbox O2. Um, but <laughs> But anyways, um, so that's why I said it was good looking. But no, it is a it's a it's a real slick wallet and it is so easy to use. Um, very simple setup, and you can protect your Bitcoin and you can take care of your Bitcoin and not have it on an exchange. And there's no better way to be the sovereign individual that we all want to be than to take your Bitcoin off of the exchanges own your wealth, own your hard-earned money, the things you put time and energy into, put it somewhere safe. So that's why I recommend the Bitbox O2 hardware wallet. It is Bitcoin only, and you can check it out at shiftcrypto.ch slash Bitcoin made simple. And who likes a discount? We always like discounts. You can get 5% off if you use the promo code Bitcoin made simple. I'll put that in the show notes uh, so that way you guys know where to go. You can click on it and uh, and get yourself a nice, uh, affordable hardware wallet and take care of your money. Anyways, so back to my mindset. Um, so that was my earlier, I was describing the mindset of the car and the difference in paying off the car or buying miners and letting them run. So then I started to look at it from a, business perspective so like think about like if you watch shark tank which i'm sure a lot of you do but even though there's a lot of fiat maximalists there like uh you know mark cuban mark love you pittsburgh uh pittsburgh native so um you know we we love you for that uh but uh, get your head out of your arse when it comes to uh, bitcoin you'll figure it out eventually as i always say Everyone's on their own individual and unique path to becoming a Bitcoin maximalist. Um, they just don't know it yet. And everybody's at a different point in that path. So some people's paths are longer, some are shorter, and some of them have more twists and turns. Um, but uh, if you ultimately will end up becoming a Bitcoin maximalist or a scammer. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, it also has Kevin O'Leary, Kevin Shitcoin O'Leary, um, uh on there uh he did speak at the bitcoin conference um which you know doesn't necessarily mean anything but uh you know he was at least there um he had to say you know the the future of bitcoin crypto blockchain oh had to put those in there anyways um so if you watch shark tank you know the investors are sitting there looking at they have their pile of money that they want to put into businesses and what always turns their attention whenever they're investing in things is a business that's kicking off free cash flows. That is where it's at. If you can invest in a business that is kicking off free cash flows, you're in great shape, you know? And like, and it's funny, like we talk about like just with like different businesses and everything I've run over the years is that you will find like, in an, if you're trying to find investors, it's really, really hard. Um, most of the time. But if you can show them that your business is profitable on a month to month basis and kicking off free cash flows, holy crap, all of a sudden they start lining up. The attitude is very different. They change their tone. Um, and then you, as the investor, are in the driver's seat, or not the investor, you as the entrepreneur in the driver's seat. Because I have this conversation with myself all the time in my head. I'm like, do I want to give off more equity? There's the trade-offs, you know, um, so this is getting really into the business side of things, you know, like it speeds up your timeline. It brings things into the, from the future, you know, to the present potentially, or to, from the distant future into the near future. Um, so that's a part of the trade-offs. That's why you weigh, uh, you know, it's what you have to weigh, but you're not, um, you're not begging for money and people can smell that desperation, you know? So it's, it's much better, um, you know, like, I mean, I'm not giving, getting into the details on Movies Plus, but with Movies Plus, 
you know, there's people that are interested in vet, in investing. And like, I go back and forth on a day to day basis where I'm like, yeah, like I'd be cool with taking on investment and, you know, we'd have to, you know, dilute our equity a little bit and whatnot, but you know, it is what it is. And then there's days I'm like, no, hell no, we don't need it. Why would I do that? Um, so it is quite maddening as an entrepreneur. Um, if you're a business owner, you get it. Um, but so anyway, so when I'm looking at buying a Bitcoin miner, so let's look at one miner in particular. What business, if you look at a miner, just the miner itself as a business, there's not a business that you could in, invest $8,500 into or $8,000, whatever you invest, that immediately kicks off a free cash flow of three hundred. dollars in $50 a month. It just doesn't exist. Um, or they're very rare. And if you are investing in that, you're not pocketing that $350 immediately because there's not a business for $8,000 that you could buy outright that's making that free cash flow. Um, you know, so if it was making that free cash flow, you'd be getting a percentage of it and, you know, you, you wouldn't have complete control over what you're, what you're doing with that money. So, anyway, so that my mindset change to that of an investor, like from like a holding company perspective of like, okay, I have this capital, I want to deploy it onto businesses. And I'm like, whoa, you know, because just to give you an idea, like I, there's like the stupid idea that I have of like owning a miniature golf course. It's more like for fun, but like things like that, I'm like the overhead can't be that high. Um, And those have got to be like churning out you know, free cash flows, especially if you have one like down in like a beach area. Like those are, I mean, I'm sure the expenses, the upfront's much higher, but holy crap, you just anytime we're on vacation and we go like miniature golfing and everything, I just stare at the like, salivate. I know I'm, I know I'm not supposed to think about business while I am on vacation, but one cannot help but see people put their hard-earned dollars straight into these machines to play a racing video game for 90 seconds and go god wow that would be great um so anyway so if you're looking at it you know like if i i couldn't invest there could there's not a miniature golf course like that that i could invest eighty five hundred dollars into that immediately is kicking off free cash flows which i mean i know i've said this a bunch of times but if for those that don't know, I'm not trying to sound like I'm talking down to anybody because I am the smoothest brain of all the smooth brains there are. But, uh, you know, the free cash flow is just basically, you know, like your your monthly profit, uh, you know, whatever your, whatever your revenue comes in, take out your expenses, boom, that's your uh, free cash flow. Uh, you couldn't do that with something like a miniature golf course. You couldn't do that with some with a, really anything. So I'm just like, okay, if I look at a miner as a business, like, why wouldn't I do that? You know what I mean? Like if you, let's extrapolate that and say, you know, somebody's going into Shark Tank and, um, and you know, I gr- granted there's the scalability uh, difference. If somebody goes into Shark Tank and they, they say, you know, I'm looking for $80,000 in uh, revenue to, you know, be part of this business, whatever the equity is, blah, blah, blah. And, and they're going through the numbers and they're like, yeah, we're profitable. You know, right now we're kicking off free cash flows of, you know, eight miners at uh, 300. I mean, God, this is really bad to do the math live, but um, yeah, like 2,800 or no, 10 miners at 30, $350. So it's like $3,500 a month in free cash flows. So like you have a huge leg up on the on anyone else that's coming in there asking for money and and they're you know not profitable haven't made any money you know we all have seen that. obviously shark tanks different than bitcoin mining because there's scalability and you know you can have the hockey stick growth this is more a slow and steady wins the race um but in my mind i it just the more i think about it, i'm like i should just do a little bit because it's dependable um sure there might be maintenance along the way but also like a lot of people are doing it and you know you you get the the cautionary tale from a lot of people like oh you don't want to get into mining just buy bitcoin and hold it but then when you start to look at it you're like i don't like i don't know like it kind of makes sense and also other people are doing it so if it wasn't profitable people would not be doing it 
um, big businesses would not be doing it. Um, so, you know, and then it also, if you're, if you're an investor in Bitcoin and, um, you know, you let's say you're not like, you don't have like the world's biggest stack, but you've got it, you've done, you've, you know, built a nice stack for yourself and you're doing okay. And you look at yourself and go, Hey, I could allocate, you know, a chunk. I could, what, what the heck I could allocate eight grand into this. Um, I just see nothing but upside. Uh, you know, you're, I mean, I see other people doing it. Like, uh, I saw Princey, Daniel Prince bought a miner. So I'm sure he's getting his feet wet. Um, I was trying to convince Luke of it and Luke's starting to see, he's like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. You know, um, you don't obviously don't want to allocate everything to it. You want to do a little bit of both, but to me also kind of like as a Bitcoiner feel like responsible to like be protecting the network, if you will, you know, it's like you buy all the Bitcoin you want, you put it in cold storage, yada, yada. Um, but like to really participate in it, you know, do you maybe take 10%? Do you take 5% of your stack? Whatever it may be, you know, do you just buy one miner and see where it is, regardless if it's 1% of your stack or 10% of your stack, whatever, whatever it is, how do you decide on this? And um, yeah, I, I just think that it's at least worth dipping my toes into. Um, so I'm going to be doing a lot of research on this and putting together like a whole plan and like i said this is the first of a series on bitcoin mining so i'll probably occasionally interview miners that uh that i could talk to about this like people that do the mining um but um but i you know i see it as a way to like really get your passive income going up big and then even if you you know don't need the passive income and you know you're you're uh, just that would be going into savings which is obviously like the ideal thing to do um you could you know you could really take you could replace your almost basically replace your kyc stack with a non-kyc stack like why not just just keep throwing you know uh it's let's just say for simple math if you had um eight thousand dollars worth of bitcoin or let's just say if you had one bitcoin and uh you know and it was kyc over the you know however many years uh, it'll eventually uh you'll get paid no that's a really bad example because it doesn't cost one bitcoin for a miner um but like for one bitcoin you could buy five miners let's say um in those five miners over the course of two years would return and give you profits of one bitcoin let's say um all of a sudden you know over the period of two years you have you've now converted it to non-kyc bitcoin so uh there's just i don't know I don't know. There's some, for some reason, it just seems right to me. This is almost like the beginning of Bitcoin starting to make sense to me. Um, and, and my wife knows, so this will be, this is going to be a fun experience for her, but she knows that like, once I start to get onto something and I'm like, you know what, this, this feels right. It's exactly what happened with Bitcoin for me. I, I like dip my toe in, put a little bit of cash in, which by the way, was just uh, recently uh, within the last two weeks was my two year anniversary of buying Bitcoin. And I walked out of the office at home and said to my wife, Hey, we own some Bitcoin now. Um, and she was like, okay. Um, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was whenever I got my toes in and, and then sure enough, it rapidly became uh, like full on maxi. I did the basic, the proverbial matrix plug-in whenever there was like, I'm going to learn, uh, you know, Taekwondo and like, <laughs> Neo's just getting crushed with it in his head. Um, and I thank all the plebs that came before me because, you know, it, it was, it was really all the 
they, they all the plebs that came before us, people like Gigi, Guy Swan, American Hoddle. Um, I mean, the, the list goes on. There's tons and tons of people. Uh, they really help you navigate the minefield that is, um, you know, the the Bitcoin uh, or the the shitcoin minefield. Um, so they really help you mi- get through that. So, anyways, I, uh, you know, I dipped my toes in, and then, you know. Oh God, I think within nine months, I was like a full fledged Bitcoin maxi and uh, was ride or die. You know, this is this is it. This is going the whole way and uh, this is going all the way uh, and it's going to change the world and, you know, completely replace the dollar and all those fun things. Um, So mining Bitcoin makes sense to me now. It's starting to make sense to at least allocate a little bit to it. Um, And we'll see where that goes goes um i don't know i don't know i mean i, I kind of want to extrapolate it over years with my research but like i think that there's a possibility that through passive income um you could take one or two miners to start and turn that into a soft retirement um for yourself I mean, I have to look at like what the mo- average monthly overhead for people is, and obviously there will be inflation. But we know that as prices of things go up over the long haul, you know the price of Bitcoin will go up uh, as well. And um, yeah, I just it's like you know if they're if they're making I don't know if you're say you're like a single person um, and you you know, how much do you need on a month to month basis to take the pressure off in your life? Um, You know, and if one miner is kicking off $350 a month in free cash flows, how many of those miners do you need to, to start, um, you know, kicking them off uh, in the kicking it off in a rate where you, you know, I mean, how, how I'm, that's what I'm going to do the research to see like how long at a slow and steady pace would it take you know, probably two, two and a half years, maybe to get up to like 10 miners. Um, and then when you're at tw- 10 miners, you know, does that mean you're kicking off three cash flows at $3,500 a month? Like, that's pretty good. Um, you know, there's more lucrative things that you could invest in as far as what kick off free cash flows. But, um, you know, to me, like, you know, I could, I mean, I just, I can't imagine. Like, could you imagine if you get to the point where, you know, I mean, this would be a lot of miners, you know, so this would be, you'd be looking at like 30, if you had like 30 miners running um, at my electricity expense, um, you would be looking at, you know, like 10 grand a month. Um, you know, that that's pretty good. And that's like... You know, if you if you're not if, if you're not living the win Lambo lifestyle, um, and you're just living like a modest lifestyle, that's you can sit back and and uh, you know kind of relax a little bit. Um, and to me, you know, the freedom of time, the, the freedom of your time is what's important. Um, you know, freeing up your time to be able to create things, to do more things, and and maybe that's you know why Bitcoiners need to to start. We all need to at least have one mine running um, because as this goes along, it will, it will reduce your, your need for fiat mining on a month to month basis. It will reduce that. It will raise your, um, it'll raise your ability to lower your time preference and, uh, and just kick back and enjoy life and take it easy and uh you know work on things that you want to work on and that's where i think the best ideas will come from uh for for bitcoin and building on top of bitcoin and making bitcoin a better play a better um a better ecosystem helping bitcoin you know get through its battles um and also building cool apps on top of it second layer third layer and then also Building, you know, making a better society, building, building on humanity, um, and leading us in the right direction. So, it's just I'm throwing my thoughts out there, and this is kind of like a scrambled mess. Um, so I'm going to keep talking about this um, every week or so, and uh, throwing a, a recording out there talking about it. But like, I mean, seriously, whenever you dig into the numbers, you look at it, 
and people are like, oh, you know, you could get cheaper electricity. Um, the electrical cost is like $250 a month or whatever I said was. Like if you cut that in half, you're only saving $125 a month. Like that's an extra $125 if you're doing it as a business at scale. That's huge, obviously. Um, but why wouldn't, why would you, why would you uh, worry about it too much if you're just hodling Bitcoin? You know, so if you're getting $350 worth of Bitcoin from this machine every month, um, sure, it could be $450 or whatever in Bitcoin, but you're getting $350. And then as the price of Bitcoin goes up, you know, it could be four fifty or five hundred a month, um, and plus you're just hodling it, and you're it's in your own house, it's under your control. Um, that is what I think is the most important. So, yeah, I got to learn all these things, and I got to figure it out because um, it just for some reason I'm feeling that tug and feeling the the calling to you know the call. The, the uh, I guess it could be the siren, you know the the old siren song that you hear where you you know run your ship ashore. Um, but it just, I think is something that we should all start thinking about. And so I figure I'm going to learn about it out loud and walk you through, because I would love to be able to listen to what somebody else did. And you guys will be able to hear about like how I, you know, like blew out fuse boxes and stuff like that. Cause there's technical parts of it that, you know, frankly, or, um, you know, until you start digging, you don't really know too much about, um, sure. The electrical cost is a lot, but like how many, how many kilowatts can my house consume on a monthly basis? Because I think that like roughly speaking, uh, a one like standard miner, like a one that with like a hundred terahash or whatever, um, that would consume like double the electrical consumption of like an average American household, I think. So, you know, it's like how much, can come into my house from the electrical company. They'll gladly let me pay for it, obviously. Um, but like, you can't, I, I'm sure you can't just go plug like eight miners in and then all of a sudden it blow your house up or blow the fuse box, destroy the power lines and everything else and really annoy your neighbors. So yeah, it's just, you know, that's why I think slow and steady plug one in, you know, it has to be into a 220 outlet, which I didn't even know what the hell that was until I got uh, started to look into this. So, you know, what you could plug your washer and dryer into is what it needs to go into. Not like, you know, what you could plug a iPhone charger into, uh, for example. So, um, yeah, there's just a lot to learn and I'm going to do it publicly and hopefully it'll be to your guys benefit and we'll just go from there and then also you know guys uh check out uh the movies i'm putting on movies plus uh seriously we're i'm gonna do an interview uh with pierre corbin actually i'm gonna put that on my to-do list right now reach out to pierre um because uh pierre did the um the documentary the rise of bitcoin or the rise with the great reset and the rise of Bitcoin. Um, so I want to interview him, talk about it, uh, and then also have that on the platform for people to check out. And then he has some cool ideas for some future projects. So uh, Bitcoiners, I promise to continue to work on bringing value to you if you become a Movies Plus subscriber, because um, I'm not trying to be a scammer or take anybody's money, but um, yeah, I'm just trying to provide value in a, a freedom of speech maximalist platform, I think would be something we could all agree with. Um, so yeah, if you check it out uh, and you help support the platform, then it can support more Bitcoin only content. Um, I say it all the time as freedom of speech maximalist. We have to, if somebody comes to me with an Ethereum doc, I have to put it up. It's not my, it's not up to me to censor people. And I think you guys can all get along with that. And also it's, you put it up there because then people go, wow, this thing's a scam. Um, but, uh, you know, let them at least have their, you know, have their uh, voice. And, uh, but I only want to create Bitcoin content. So the more people that sign up for movies plus at mymoviesplus.com or search for it in the app store, you can start with a 30 day free trial. If you do the annual subscription, it comes down 
to like two dollars and fifty cents a month and it's ad free content and we're adding content constantly but uh yeah the more subscribers we have then i can just start you know pumping out uh more content and you know it'd be really cool because like I pierre on or P- i didn't have him on yet but whenever i talk to him at the conference and we're talking about the different ideas that he's working on and i'm like oh god like dude we're close so like you know let's let's do something here and let's you know, as as um, Movies Plus continues to grow, the moment that we have the the free cash flows supporting it, I can just point to him and say, "All right, remember that project we talked about? Go do it. Let's make it." Because um, uh, it's some pretty cool stuff. So I'm not going to spoil it because uh, that's his it's his story and his his thing. But uh, yeah, check it out. And then thanks again, obviously, to Shift Crypto with the Bitbox O2. Check him out at Shift crypto.ch slash bitcoin made simple and thank you guys as always for listening please like and subscribe the show wherever you consume it uh so that uh we can we can keep this going and if you saw phil gibson is now part of the show so phil's here uh we're gonna be doing it we're gonna have at least three episodes per week coming out um and it'll probably be more i under promise over deliver but uh yeah you guys are gonna be getting a lot of good content uh with luke and phil uh on board with me and the three of us together uh will will be hopefully providing some value to you guys so and uh if you haven't checked out his conversation with tom luongo it was the most recent one before this episode um so go and check that out he originally released it on his podcast but um since he joined the network he thought it'd be a good one to start with um and uh it was just a a killer interview so anyways yeah uh just reach out to me and for future episodes seriously if you guys are listening and you want me to answer questions about anything not just bitcoin but anything um relationship advice i don't know maybe i have some uh what movies to watch what you know who's who's looking good for the super bowl this year all that kind of stuff i don't think i'm actually you know worthwhile listening to but i'll give dumb stupid answers and and uh maybe be entertaining a little bit so if you guys ever want to reach out just go to the show email it's bitcoin made simple podcast at gmail.com dot com jesus and then uh you could just uh you know put in the subject line like show questions and and i'll read them out loud if i ever get them and uh you know we'll we'll see what uh what comes of that so anyways thanks guys for listening and i will catch you next time